Hello fellow planters. So a few years ago I got a cutting for an angel wing begonia and I rooted it and it grew two nice shoots and one of them started breaking off. I had these at one point over the refrigerator in the kitchen and it wasn't receiving much light and even though these are low light plants it received very little light for what it likes so it wasn't doing too well and I haven't been able to revive this one too well so the best option would be to repot it and I'm gonna repot it with a large mix of perlite because I don't like to use drainage holes and the perlite gives it more airiness so as the water fills up there's still gonna be pockets of gaps so that the roots do have some breathing room so I have this pot here that has um, soil and instead of taking my simple succulent mix if you've seen my video oh I have some sand mixed in with this one nice um, I, I'm just uh, you know this one is quite uh, airy wow I wonder if the sand um, will produce too many salts so that's one thing I could always test after I water it with a TDS meter but I'm not going to worry about it because the one that grew out I um, transplanted it and it is doing really really well as you can see this angel wing that's right against a west facing window and gets a lot of nice afternoon light is growing out of control I have so many new offshoots I basically am running out of space for this bad boy, but I don't want to prune it at the moment. I want to wait for and watch it flower. But anyway, this is a, a really nice, healthy, happy begonia. Although I'm not sure what kind of angel wing this is. The ones I've been seeing in stores lately t are typically a lot redder in color. But this one has a nicer, um, like a whitish polka dots and not as much redness to it which is a little more different or distinctive than what i've been finding in stores these days so anyway i'm loosening the soil and you know a lot of times you have roots from old plants if you reuse soil and i feel like the roots um may have a similar effect to like peat moss where it helps retain moisture but I could be wrong I just have that um, notion that it's similar or like cocoa peat or something but you know there's always a chance that the roots can rot or attract gnats if they are rotting so anyway it's up to you whether you want to use the roots or not I haven't had any issues some people who may be more persnickety might so anyway I'm just mixing this in simply and you know I can always take out these old bits from whatever I had planted in years ago which I think was a golem jade it started to suffer and at the time I didn't know any better and thought oh no more water so that's what sometimes one of the worst things you can do to a plant is add more water when it doesn't need it and begonias you know they can do really well with a lot of water you see how much water i have in here so i'm hoping i could um, revive this nicely because i'm going to take this to probably to the office and i can actually set this down momentarily add a little bit more soil break that apart and raise this up to the height of the roots. I can always stir this if I want a better mix. I can always add a little more perlite too. I don't know if I need to do 50% perlite or not. I already have a ton in here, but you know, some people will go like Oh, it needs this exact percentage or no, you just get it, you know, you eyeball it, it's fine. It doesn't have to be an exact science, you'll go crazy. So now let me check the height. I can do a little more. 
It is like 90 today and there's a chance of rain. The radar far west from here it looks like there is some precipitation but it's blotchy and the morning sounding actually showed I think like four or seven cape. I can't remember what units that is and like minus 300 something of convective inhibition. So the reality is there is not really any energy for these cumulus clouds to break through the boundary layer into the free atmosphere. But who knows, hopefully as the day progresses, the convective available potential energy could be building up to allow um, thunderstorms to develop from these cumulus clouds and maybe get some nice cumulonimbus, uh, can't even speak cumulonimbus clouds because my plants are parched. My carnivorous plants are starting to suffer. They need more, you know, the ones I have outdoors. I'm, I have some that really need water. But hopefully now that this is planted, it will have new growing media for the roots to grow and spread and more airy. If you look at this growing media here, there wasn't much perlite in it. And since I don't like to use drainage holes when I don't need to, like indoors, I think putting a tray underneath for an indoor plant is ridiculous because you always end up overwatering and spilling and then you're not really overwatering, you're overwatering the pot but not the plant because it, it spills, especially if it's really dry. It doesn't soak up in all the sand, I mean all the dirt, and you end up having most of it lost to the tray and then you can only put a limited amount. So without a drainage hole, you don't have to worry. You can always use a humidity sensor for the soil or weigh it if you want to, or just, you know, give it a little bit amount at a time when it looks dry. And I really enjoy not using drainage holes on indoor potted plants. Anyway, now I get to water this. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and happy planting.